Is MetaQuest Elite Meta's answer to Apple's Vision Pro? Welcome back, Spatial Cadets, and get ready for a mind-bending trip into the world of spatial computing. Because in this episode, we're doing a deep dive into the MetaQuest Pro successor that very well could be at this year's MetaConnect, which may or may not be in person. Beyond that, we've got new VR games, plus Waffy's reality check at the end, where I take a closer, more critical look at today's news. Starting with MetaQuest Elite. It's been recently leaked, that MetaQuest 3 might not be the only new hardware from Meta this year, as there is also the Quest Pro successor that they have yet to mention publicly. Rumors suggest the existence of the MetaQuest Elite. This highly anticipated headset could be Meta's answer to Apple's entry into the spatial computing market. Now, according to leaked information, the MetaQuest Elite features a retinal resolution display with an impressive 55 pixels per density, providing an incredibly lifelike pass-through mode. This display quality is comparable to what Apple Vision Pro is expected to offer and is pretty much considered to be the gold standard as far as getting us to retina quality displays finally. In fact, Quest 2's PPD is 20, while the Quest Pro is a whopping 22. The MetaQuest Elite is not a mere incremental upgrade from the Quest 3. It is also said to be equipped with the powerful Qualcomm Snapdragon XR3 chip or SXR2230P, which is not even available in other devices yet. So apparently Meta's goal is to ensure as seamless and immersive an experience as humanly possible, even in the pass-through mode, because they are aiming to compete with Apple Vision Pro. The MetaQuest Elite is rumored to include a depth sensor as well, just like the Quest 3, which will enhance its spatial tracking capabilities. MetaQuest Elite is also looking to feature a new operating system that is specifically designed for the Elite, streamlining entertainment and fully immersive applications while maximizing the built-in eye tracking technology. So basically, Meta wants to be the first to bring a spatial control experience to market, allowing users to make selections simply by using their eyes, which is just one of those things that people say on AVP is flawless. So other notable features of the MetaQuest Elite include spatial video capture capabilities inside and outside of the headset. This will enable users to capture and share their immersive experiences with others. Look at Apple Vision Pro and how it's offering that Minority Report style holographic videos already to make you feel like you are actually there. Well, it turns out we're actually going to be able to share our gameplay in full spatial glory. As for the pricing, rumors do suggest a price tag of $24.99, obviously making it a far more affordable option than Apple Vision Pro, which is $3,500, a whole thousand dollars more. And it's expected to be announced live by Mark Zuckerberg himself. Meaning only two things. One, an all-day eat-a-thon. And two, getting to see Zuck up close, which was pretty cool. I can't lie. One of the best PC VR games of the last few years is set to make its way to PlayStation VR 2 in 2023. During today's Perp Games VR showcase, it was officially announced that Vertigo 2, the enthralling action-adventure VR game, will be coming to PSVR 2 headsets. This game initially released exclusively on Steam VR in March earlier this year will now be expanding its reach to the PlayStation VR 2 platform. This exciting news was accompanied by details about additional features coming to the PC version of Vertigo 2, which will allow players to import custom textures into the upcoming level editor, further enhancing the creative possibilities within the game. Additionally, players can unlock three alternate playable characters with distinct playstyles after beating the game, adding even more variety and replayability. Created by Zach Sockless Brown, a 22-year-old genius spatial developer, Vertigo 2 draws inspiration from the campaigns of Valve Classic like Half-Life and Portal. Topless Brown takes a VR-first approach to game design, resulting in an immersive and thrilling experience. With its arsenal of satisfying creative weapons and its 18-chapter campaign filled with challenging bosses, Vertigo 2 has garnered critical acclaim from members of the spatial press, including myself. I play this thing every night and I love it. In an interview conducted by Upload VR with Oculus Brown this past April, he expressed his keen interest in bringing Vertigo 2 to PSVR 2, 
While he had discussions with Sony about a potential partnership, no concrete plans were revealed at the time of the interview in April. However, three months later, it appears that those talks have evolved into something more solid, making Vertigo 2 an exciting addition to the PlayStation VR 2 library. Vertigo 2 is coming soon. A side-loadable recreation of Apple Vision Pro's eye-tracking-based interface is now available for Quest Pro users to experience. Developed by Supernova Technologies using their Nova UI framework, work for Unity, this recreation aims to showcase the capabilities of the middleware. Upon launching the demo, users will be presented with the app grid seen in the Vision Pro introduction video, with the Quest Pro's color pass-through serving as the background. The recreation replicates Apple's gaze and pinch interaction system. Utilizing the Quest Pro's eye tracking, users can select apps or menu items by looking at them while the controller-free hand tracking allows for pinch gestures to simulate a click action. While the demo does not provide functional app launches, users can explore a demo panel showcasing various Nova UI interface elements, including sliders, toggle buttons, and resizing. The Quest Pro's eye tracking performs well in the demo, requiring proper calibration. However, the controller-free hand tracking has limitations compared to the Apple Vision Pro experience. Unlike the Vision Pro, which has downward facing cameras allowing finger pinching even when hands are resting on knees or a couch the quest pro requires users to hold their hands up in the air wanderer the fragments of fate a reimagined version of the time travel adventure game is set to release on PC VR, PSVR 2, and Quest 2 next year. The original Wanderer game offered immersive escape room style puzzles set across different time periods. The Fragments of Fate remake promises a visual overhaul introducing stunning graphics and new interactive elements to enhance the gameplay experience. The official announcement on the PlayStation blog provided further details about the exciting new features on PlayStation VR 2. Players will now have the ability to swim, jump, crouch, climb, zip line, and swing their way through time embracing the true spirit of adventure. The cutting edge haptic technology of PSVR 2 will further enhance immersion with proximity and context sensitive haptics, creating an unparalleled level of interaction and sensory experience. A recent trailer revealed that Wanderer the Fragments of Fate is also scheduled to arrive on Quest 2 in 2024, and likely Quest 3 also. Although initially confirmed only for PSVR 2 and PC VR, the official website mentioned completely overhauled visuals for PlayStation VR 2 and scalable visuals for Quest 2, creating worlds that are richer and more beautiful. Fans of Wanderer can look forward to a revitalized and immersive adventure, exploring the depths of time with enhanced visuals, expanded gameplay mechanics, and a memorable journey across different eras. And now it's time for a reality check where we take a more critical look at today's news, starting with Vertigo 2 and Wanderer expanding beyond PC VR. Now seeing PC VR games coming to PS VR 2 and Quest 2 is extremely bittersweet for me. I'm really happy that people other than, let's face it here, the middle to upper class can enjoy these classics. But what worries me is a coming trend that I'm noticing here. Kind of started with Assassin's Creed Nexus recently with its CG footage, but now we're just using gameplay footage from other platforms and then marking it with something like, your experience may vary. No shit it's gonna vary, it's not gonna look anything like this. And sadly, we have no idea what it will look like. And that worries me. You look at a game like Hubris, where it completely worked from PC to Quest, but then you look at games like Into the Radius, where it really didn't. Between Assassin's Creed Nexus CG trailer and this, I feel like Quest players, honestly, are being lied to. Alright, let's talk about today's top story, the MetaQuest Elite, because I'm sure you guys have a lot of questions about it, such as, who is my source? And I'm just going to say, right up front, I cannot give that up. But for those of you that have been watching me for a little bit, you might have noticed that I've gotten a few things right kind of along the way, be them either predictions or just things I've heard from people that I know throughout the industry. For instance, how I knew that Apple Vision Pro was going to feature see-through eyes, and I knew this back in February. Or how I knew that Quest 3 was going to be announced just before Apple Vision Pro, because I do hear a lot of things. I've been doing this for a minute. The fact of the matter is, though, is that I really enjoy my friends. I really enjoy my source chain. So I cannot tell you. What I can tell you, though, is that in this case, it is somebody that was recently let go from Meta with a lot of information, and they have been goodly enough to share a lot of it with me. 
I also happen to know that the people that were let go at Meta had to sign some strict NDAs that were tied directly with their severance packages, so I cannot give my source away. Now, I haven't seen it in person, but it has been described to me, and this is basically what it is here. But this isn't just info on a new headset either. This is also strategy that I was let in on because they are gearing the hell up against Apple. Meta pretty much owns this whole thing right now. And it is seriously looking like Apple's just about to come and take it. Kind of how Google did to Apple. I can tell you right now, Meta is not going quietly into the night. There's already talks about people saying things like, what if the Quest becomes like the Windows phone? That's harsh. But the $1,000 less is a direct affront to Apple and their $3,500 Apple Vision Pro. And if you're thinking that there is no way that they would release a Quest Pro successor a year after Quest Pro came out at $1,500, just remember that Quest 2 came out 509 days after Quest 1 came out. And they pretty much threw that thing in the trash. One final little nugget that I'm going to share in this video. And that is how Meta absolutely refuses to call this thing Quest Pro 2 after the debacle that was Quest Pro 1. By the way, I'm giving this Quest Pro right here away to one of you guys out there. And the details for that are in this video right here. So like this video if you enjoyed it, follow me on my socials, subscribe to join the ranks of the Spatial Cadets, good luck, and make it a great day.